So I just played Transistor, and I think I found one of my favorite games of all time. This game is definitely what I would consider a true testament to how games are art. Every little asset, every little area of the game world is filled to the brim with consistent, beautiful artwork all blending together to immerse the player. Transistor is a game that starts out in a rather confusing situation. Suddenly, you are a red-headed woman incapable of speech who pulls a USB-looking sword out of a dead man's chest. Plus, the sword talks in a voice very unexpected of a mechanical-type object. It's intentionally strange and off-putting. For the next few minutes, you traverse the game in confusion, wondering what in the world is going on and how this place works. However, soon the pieces start falling together as you explore and fight your way onward. I highly recommend checking out every corner and clicking on every interactable object for the full experience. As the characters and worlds start revealing themselves to you, you start to truly understand the story and what is actually going on there. Some of the aha moments of this game's story almost make it feel like a mystery, with the player as the detective. I definitely do not want to spoil the story for you, since some of these moments are truly spectacular, and the ending and characters Transistor contains are some of my favorite in gaming. While I felt a little bit disappointed with Ori and the Blind Forest's story, Transistor's was unexpectedly beautiful and bittersweet. Make sure to pay attention to what the circuit board sword says. Its words are key to many of the mysteries. Yes, this is a category now, because as an artist, the general look, feel, and design of a game's art style is very important to me. And Transistor nails everything about the look it's going for. The whole style of the city of Cloudbank seems to be inspired by the artist Gustav Kmit, who was famous for the use of gold leaf in his paintings. He also had a habit of adding in patterns of strange shapes and abstract concepts into his artwork. As such, Transistor takes this unique style and makes it its own, turning the strange shapes into the parts of a computer's circuit board and the gold leaf into the dress of the protagonist in parts of the landscape. Speaking of the landscape, the city of Cloudbank is a real sight to behold. Each unique area is brimming with detail. The lighting is spectacular and the color palette work is even more stunning. You really get a definitive feeling of the style of the world and are immersed in the artistry and the architecture of the city. The brief cutscenes in the game are where the character art starts to shine. Close-ups of the main protagonist, Red, showing her expressions and the way she interacts with the world. Even though she is silent, from the wonderful artwork you get a real sense of who she is. Gen Z's pieces are absolutely gorgeous, perhaps my favorite pieces of art from the game. Though they are not quite animated like traditional cutscenes, their mood lighting and composition more than make up for it, telling the player all they need to. I highly recommend checking out Gen Z's DeviantArt for more work like this. The link will be in the description. I also really like the cool character illustrations representing each move. Transistor's gameplay and fighting mechanics were very strange at first. While it seems like a real-time hack and slash when playing the first tutorial, you soon see that there are elements of turn-based RPG in it as well. The blending of these two styles is weird and awkward for the first time, but soon I was able to get used to it and after a lot of trial and error, slowly uncovered what the mechanics of the game really were and how to go about playing it. For example, the little save spaces I tossed my sword into weren't just save spaces, but also places for me to mix and match my learned moves to my liking. There are four main slots for moves, but there are a lot of moves. What to do with the extra ones? Well, you can use them as passives, or to enhance your main moves with extra abilities. Mixing and matching main moves with sub moves and passives was really creative and interesting. I've never seen a game do something like that before, hence why it was strange at first to figure it out. It wasn't really explained either, but I don't really mind that, since figuring the whole thing out was interesting in its own right. I highly suggest messing around with your moves if you ever play the game. Feel the game is too easy? There are also what are called limiters, which you can earn and then use to make the game harder in different ways. You can make the enemies cause more damage or even make them respawn faster. It's all up to you. One of the shining artistic parts of Transistor besides the obvious digital paintings is the music. It fits with the world and tone of the game perfectly, and some of the tracks are downright lovely, especially the ones where Red sings. I highly recommend checking it out. 
One of the little details I liked the best was that, when you press space in order to use up a turn, you can hear Red humming along to the tune of the background music. You can also do this when outside of battle, but with the tab button, I believe. Her humming is wonderful and relaxing. Here are the soundtrack pieces I recommend the most. Old Friends, The Spine, Sandbox, Forecast, Signals, We All Become, and Paper Boats. But this last song does contain spoilers, so I recommend playing the game first before listening. Do I recommend this game? Absolutely. It is rather short, but really sweet. The ending is spectacular and emotional, while the story and art are beautiful testaments to how much care and love went into this game. Yes, I highly recommend it to pretty much everyone who is even the slightest bit interested. Transistor is great, and I think it really has something for everyone.